I you sitting comfortably? Then we will begin. Loneliness is something that I don't hear people talk about much, and it's something that I personally am incredibly afraid to talk about, especially in regards to myself and my own feelings of it. Once you admit to a vulnerability like feeling lonely, it's quite often used as a weapon against you and that just makes you feel even worse and in many cases even more isolated and lonely. On a smaller scale, if not used as a weapon, then I find that it, I don't know if it's just my own anxiety talking, but it kind of makes you more unappealing to people, you know? Like in my experience, people want to hang out with fun, exciting people, not lonely, sad people. So sometimes admitting that you're feeling lonely will inevitably lead to you feeling even lonelier. But at the same time, if you don't talk about it, if you don't admit to it, then how can you ever fix it? How can you ever overcome loneliness without admitting you're lonely in the first place? It feels like one big never-ending spiral that is so difficult to escape from. Professor Lars Andersson from the Department of Social and Welfare Studies at Linköping University in Sweden, hope I'm pronouncing that right, defines loneliness as an enduring condition of emotional distress that arises when a person feels estranged from, misunderstood or rejected by others and or lacks appropriate social patterns for desired activities, particularly activities that provide a sense of social integration and opportunities for emotional intimacy. However, it's important to remember that this might not manifest in everyone in the same way, and it might not stem from the same causes. In my, like, personal experience, there are different types of loneliness and they make you feel different ways, you know? There's the kind of lonely when you're surrounded by people but they purposely exclude you, like I used to feel in school. There's the kind of lonely when you're around people who act like you should fit in with them but you know you don't, and then they judge you for it so you feel even more isolated, so even though you're around people, you don't feel connected to them. That's kind of how I feel a lot of the time around my family, which is why I don't r spend time with them anymore, really. There's the lonely, like when you need a friend to talk to, but you don't have anyone you can ask, or when something amazing happens and you want to share it with people, and you know, or there's something like funny or interesting you've seen that you want to like share with someone and then you realize you don't have anyone to share it with. Just kind of a similar sort of lonely, you know? There's the loneliness when you throw a birthday party and invite 20 people and only three people show up. Or there's the loneliness when you don't get invited to an event by someone who you thought you were friends with. Or there's the loneliness when you realize that someone means the most in the world to you and then it turns out that you're like number 30 on their priority list and they just don't necessarily value you in the same way that you value them and on the one hand you're like well at least I have someone in my life I should be grateful but on the other hand you're like well this does make me feel like crap lonely and they're just like a handful of experiences I've had in the last couple of years <laughs> I'm sure you can list plenty of others too, and I'm sure you have experienced plenty of others. In fact, please share your kind of like types of lonely and how the different feelings kind of manifest or where they stem from down in the comments. Because loneliness isn't this one size fits all experience. Loneliness is something that I think we all experience in different ways. And it's important to understand how it affects and impacts us all differently, you know? In these last two years especially, I think people have been experiencing different kinds of loneliness and feeling it often and for prolonged periods of time, mostly due to like lockdowns and COVID and everything like that. And I actually had a sort of like mini epiphany over Christmas, if you can call it that. That sounds a bit melodramatic, but we're going for melodrama today, let's do it. I had a mini epiphany over Christmas, okay? Let me set the scene. Actually, let me not set the scene, I'm just gonna jump into the story. So I felt particularly hurt this Christmas um, and New Year because I was spending it alone and I had like people saying to me or well not really saying to me but I saw people saying online like oh yeah like there's so many people spending it alone this year like I have to isolate because of COVID so I know what you're going through and at the time I was like really really hurt by that because I was like no you don't know what I'm going through it's not the same you're forced to be alone because of a medical condition I'm forced to be alone because I have no one to be with like and I somehow felt like my loneliness was worse because it wasn't pandemic dependent and I was really annoyed at other people for like you know trying to say that they understood what I was going through and I was like you don't understand you don't know what it's like and then I just realized that was like an incredibly selfish way of thinking in reality, the cause of loneliness doesn't matter. What matters is the fact that we were all feeling lonely and we all were hurting in some way or another. If you're lonely, you're lonely. And in that moment, it hurts regardless of the cause, regardless if it's because you're ill 
and stuck at home isolating or because you don't have any friends or family to celebrate with. The point is we were all still hurting and feeling lonely and no one type of loneliness was better or worse or more important or more serious or, I don't know, bigger than anyone else's. And it was really, really selfish of me to think otherwise. Feelings of loneliness can and do affect your mental and physical health regardless of what the cause is. And it's something that we need to take really, really seriously. So Faye Bound Alberti writes in A Biography of Loneliness, which is a great book, really enjoyed it, you know, for a book about loneliness. <laughs> and she writes about how serious the consequences of loneliness can be. She says, loneliness, especially chronic loneliness linked to deprivation can be terrible. When disconnected socially or emotionally from others, people can get ill. Deprived of touch, of meaningful human engagement, people can die. Chronic loneliness is not choosy. It often settles on the shoulders of those who have suffered enough with mental or physical health problems, with addiction, with abuse. Later in the book, she points out that the NHS website suggests that lonely people are 30% more likely to die earlier than less lonely people, with loneliness being a risk factor for heart problems, strokes, dementia, depression, and, and anxiety amongst the aged, or aged, elderly people. So the point is, like, the cause doesn't make some loneliness more or less important than others. What we need to look at is how it affects us and others and actually take it seriously and start to reduce the stigma around loneliness and admitting that we feel lonely. I know I personally like find myself physically struggling more than usual when I'm feeling lonely and isolated and just to be completely like frank with you for a moment I do find that when I'm feeling lonely and I get really sad and I get stuck in my own head and I'm just feeling a bit of a lonely mess. I do find things like keeping up with basic hygiene more difficult, near impossible. I do find that my sleep is disrupted, my skin gets worse, my appetite's more messed up than usual. It absolutely affects me physically. My anxiety goes through the roof. It's just, yeah, I'm a bit of a mess. <laughs> What's interesting though is that plenty of people who do study loneliness point out that there's a difference between physical and emotional loneliness. So you can be in a shared physical space with people and still feel emotionally lonely. But similarly, you can be in completely separate physical locations and not feel emotionally lonely if you have a good kind of support network around you from a distance. And I guess that's one of the things that lockdown has taught some people is that even when we don't have the physical contact with people, we can still have an emotional connection over, you know, instant messaging and Zoom calls and video chats and that kind of thing. So having an emotional connection can reduce the impact of physical loneliness, ideally for like a healthy human experience, I guess. We need both physical and emotional connections with people and having either physical or emotional loneliness or both can be really, really detrimental to our health. However, it's really, really important to mention that there is a huge difference between being alone and being lonely. There's a massive difference between solitude and isolation. I like being alone. I like solitude. I hate feeling lonely. Solitude though, let's talk about that for a second because that's good. Like I say, I like that. I love doing things alone. I, I like to shop alone, I go to museums and galleries, I go on day trips alone, um, I like spending evenings by myself just cuddling Kyra and watching TV or playing games or making art or reading or doing anything really. I take myself out on dates, I pick somewhere nice, I take myself for lunch, I have a little glass of wine by myself, I love it. I, I do enjoy my own company and I often choose to spend my time alone in order to work on new skills and hobbies and learn things and just take some time getting to know me. I do that all the time. I'm very, very comfortable being alone. But the difference is that stuff is only fun. That stuff is only enriching when I'm choosing to do it. When I am craving social interaction, like all humans do at some point, and I can't get it, that's when I feel lonely. That's when it affects my mental and physical health. And that's when I really, really struggle. Loneliness is a really, really difficult thing to talk about publicly though, especially online. Loneliness seems to be used as kind of like an insult or a threat or a sort of like, oh, told you so moment. Like I have lost count of how many, mostly men have told me that I'm gonna be a lonely cat lady because I'm a feminist or because I don't want kids or because I'd never sleep with them or because I dye my hair or because of whatever arbitrary reason they've decided to disagree with me that day and wanna throw an insult at me, but they're wrong. I'm not lonely because I'm a feminist. I'm not lonely because I'm child free. If I suddenly decided that I, I don't know, wanted to be 
wanted to become a stay-at-home mother married to a misogynistic douchebag who, you know, know, treated me like a slave, that wouldn't stop me feeling lonely. I would still be lonely. I might be surrounded by a certain type of person and children. I would have, you know, I, I, I guess I wouldn't be physically lonely as such because I'd have people around me, but I'd still be incredibly emotionally lonely because I wouldn't be around the t- kind of people that I find fulfilling or stimulating or who would make me happy. I'd probably even be like a worse kind of lonely because, you know, I'd be forced into a physical setting that I wasn't comfortable with and still emotionally disconnected from the people around me, you know? Loneliness isn't just about, ooh, do you have a husband and kids? Or, ooh, are there people physically near you right now? Ooh, are there people in your house? It's far more complex than that. You can't force a lifestyle on someone just to hope it's gonna reduce loneliness. Loneliness at its core is about a lack of connection with people. So you can be in a large family, you can have kids, you can have a husband, blah, 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 and you still might not feel emotionally connected to them. You might not have a fulfilling relationship with them and that can still make you feel lonely. If curing loneliness was as simple as just, oh, pop out a baby or get married to the first person you see, then (laughs) I think we'd all be doing it, you know? Loneliness is incredibly complex and it can be difficult to understand why you're lonely or pinpoint what causes it. And sometimes it can feel practically impossible to know how to fix it, especially in the moment. And like I say, if curing loneliness was easy, I wouldn't be making this video at all, would I? William C. Sharp writes in The Poetry Pharmacy Returns, which is a book I recommend quite a lot and I absolutely love it to bits, along with the first one in the series, just The Poetry Pharmacy. But he writes that the strangest thing about loneliness is that it seems to bear almost no resemblance to what anyone's life is actually like or even how many friends and acquaintances they have. Which is absolutely, completely true. I know I get told all the time, like, oh, how can you be lonely? You have, like, these, like, nearly quarter of a million followers who watch things that you do and this and I'm like it's not the same it's as much as I appreciate it and it's lovely and it's nice it's not the same as like one really deep connected friendship you know they don't fulfill the same emotional needs in me and so sometimes even with like a few hundred thousand people watching I can still feel incredibly alone. And I suspect I'm not the only one who feels lonely. I sus- and I suspect I'm not the only one who feels scared to admit it and talk about it. And that's kind of why I want to make this video because I think by speaking out about it, by admitting that, you know what? A lot of the time I am very, very lonely. I think that's one way that we can start to have a conversation about loneliness and what it means and what causes it and how we fix it. And overall just start to reduce the stigma around this. As long as people are being made to feel ashamed about being lonely, then making any kind of change on, you know, like a micro scale in our personal lives and a macro scale in the grand scheme of things is going to be very, very difficult. I don't want to feel ashamed anymore for feeling lonely. I don't want that to be like a dirty little thing I have to like disclose. Like, no, I'm, I'm lonely and I would like more friends and I'm actively working my life to try and make more friends and I don't think that's something I should be ashamed to admit anymore. What's interesting though is that I find that I, I don't know if this is necessarily true, but just something I've kind of observed. This is more anecdotal than like there's stats to back it up, but I feel like in recent years, there's been more stigma than ever around loneliness. And I think it's because so many people feel this constant pressure now to post, like, especially online about all the cool things they're doing with all these cool people. And like, everyone's trying to outdo each other to see like, who has the coolest life and the coolest friends and this and this, and I know so-and-so and so-and-so and this and this and this. And so I feel like more than ever, there's this stigma around it. Whereas in reality, people have always felt lonely and loneliness has been a big part of like poetry and literature in the past as well. It's been an inspiration for so much art. One example of this is Edgar Allan Poe's quite sombre toned poem, Alone, which I've always felt this kind of particular connection to. So if you'll allow me to read it. From childhood's hour, I have not been. As others were, I have not seen. As others saw, I could not bring my passions from a common spring. From the same source, I have not taken. My sorrow, I could not awaken. My joy to heart at the same tone. And all I'd loved, I'd loved alone. Then in my childhood, in the dawn of a most stormy life was drawn from every depth of good and ill, the mystery which binds me still, from the torrent or the fountain, from the red cliff of the mountain, from the sun that round me rolled in its autumn tint of gold, from the lightning in the sky as it passed me flying by, from the thunder and the storm and the cloud that took the form, 
when the rest of heaven was blue of a demon in my view. So in this, he opens by telling us how he's always felt different from everyone around him, a sentiment which I completely relate to. And it's always reminded me of those feelings of like loneliness and isolation that I felt particularly as a teenager in school when I didn't really have any friends. And then as the poem goes on, we get this impression that these difficulties which make him feel so lonely and isolated also kind of help make him who he is and they help him see the world in a really unique and beautiful way and it's kind of like this internal struggle because it causes problems for him and it isolates him and he has all these mental health problems because of it but would he really want to give up his unique and wonderful fundamental parts of himself just to fit in a little bit more and it's something that I think about often because I love the way my brain works and I love the way I see the world quite differently to most people I've ever met and I think my kind of oddness <laughs> or weirdness or uniqueness or whatever it is, it's, it's who I am and it's a very fundamental part of me. I know I'm smart and creative and passionate but sometimes I wonder if that's really enough to make up for how lonely and disconnected from people I feel sometimes and I do wonder like how different my life would have been if I'd had a little bit more of a normal brain and not had all the social issues and stuff. But then again, I'm like, <sighs> I don't know, because the good points that come with that, like I say, the intelligence and the creativity and the passion and everything, like, does that make up for it? Part of me wouldn't want to give that up for anything in the world, so I don't know. And that that's kind of what this poem's ultimately about and kind of why I relate to it and connect with it so much and I don't know does anyone else feel like that is that is that just me or is that you know are there are there others like me tell me I'm not alone please <laughs> anyway that's just one poem and this of course isn't the only representation of loneliness in literature some of them actually we've spoken about on this channel before so um for example Bertha's uh, loneliness and isolation is a key part of June Reese's Wide Sargasso Sea for example um, loneliness and being an outsider is a central theme in Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, just to name a couple of examples. Wordsworth, in his incredibly famous poem, you know, I wandered lonely as a cloud, that shows more of a kind of l less less about loneliness and more about being alone and feelings of solitude and how that can be really like, you know, positive and have its benefits and all that kind of thing. So loneliness is something that has been written about and spoken about and used in art for a really long time so why is it now that we have such stigma around it why is it something that we're suddenly more ashamed of than ever anyway if you can think of any other representations of loneliness in poetry or prose or art or media or anything like that i'd really really love to hear your examples and um yeah let me let me know down in the comments so with all this in mind is there a cure for loneliness which i know is an insanely big question and I do not know the answer at all. Is the best thing to do to become content in your solitude or is it to overcome feelings of loneliness and find new ways to fulfill your social needs? What's the best thing to do? I don't know. But I do think that it's gonna be different for everyone. So in The Loneliness Cure by Corey Floyd, the author talks about how loneliness stems from lack of meaningful connection uh, with an emphasis on the meaningful part. So I think if you are feeling lonely, you need to kind of ask yourself, like, where are you lacking this meaningful connection in your life? Is it with others or with yourself? Who are you most disconnected with? For example, someone who's always around people and doesn't really know how to be alone, and then when they do have to be alone for, say, an evening gets lonely, they might have to work on learning to kind of become their own friend, to enjoy time alone, to find fulfillment in solitude. That might be something they need to work on and then that's going to reduce their feelings of loneliness and be an all-round positive thing. Whereas for someone like me who's completely happy being alone but sometimes craves a little more so social interaction than I get, I think I need to take a much different approach because I need to work on like building relationships and friendships with other people. I already have a pretty solid one with myself um, and I don't really need more of that, you know? <laughs> so in terms of connecting with others, the book I just mentioned, The Loneliness Cure, offers a few pretty good bits of advice. Uh, for example, one thing is to actually make sure you're open to receiving like affection and attention and friendship from others. And, and this is something that I was like, oh, something's clicking here now because one thing I've noticed that I'm absolutely guilty of is pushing people away or pulling myself away from things out of fear like fear of getting hurt again and I think sometimes we need to be a little bit brave and take a risk and kind of open ourselves up to others and offer 
affection and friendship and kindness to others first in order to get it back in return. I have become very aware recently that I've been doing this sort of unconsciously over the last year. No doubt in response to, you know, the whole abusive relationship thing. But if I ever want to trust people again, then I need to actually take a risk and stop pushing people away and stop unconsciously isolating myself. So I've tried to become more aware of my own actions and now I'm trying to stop myself from doing it and kind of catch myself when I see myself pushing people away and be like, no, stop, don't do this. And then like reaching out to people first instead. And it's been hard, it's taken some doing, but I think I'm making positive steps forward with that, which is helping. And I am starting to feel a little more like connected with people and stuff. So like tonight I'm going out for drinks with one of my neighbors and I was the one who asked her. I'm like, hey, do you wanna have like a bit of a girly night out and we'll go get some cocktails and stuff like that? So um, it was terrifying and I was really, really scared, but I'm doing it and I feel really good. And I think it's one of the first steps in like, you know, stopping being lonely and forging like more solid friendships and stuff, you know? Another bit of advice it gives is to make sure that you're fostering all kinds of like relationships with different kinds of people in your life. So don't just look for, for example, a relationship or don't just look for a certain type of friend, but look for all kinds of people that you can connect with and all kinds of different relationships in your life. You kind of need to like diversify and don't put all the pressure on like one person to be the be all and end all of your like social interactions. Don't just go out there looking for one kind of person or friend or relationship. So like go out there just looking to connect with people and you might end up with, you know, friends or people who you share hobbies with, people you can learn from, a mentor or a family figure or a parental figure or a relationship or anything like that. There's, there's lots of different types of relationships you can have with different types of people and I think the idea is you just open yourself up to many different kinds of uh, connections, you know? And that, that can be a really scary thing, but also I think overall a really positive thing. Um, and then the book goes on to give some advice about like actually going out and meeting people and how you do that, which I found really, really helpful. So if you're interested, I will leave the book linked in the video description. It will be an affiliate link, so if you do end up buying the book, it just helps support me and my channel and my work. Um, but as always, absolutely no pressure. So to conclude, loneliness. Loneliness is serious and it's something we shouldn't be afraid to admit when we're feeling lonely or that if we need a little bit of help with it, you know? If you're watching this and you're the one feeling lonely, then I want you to remember that it absolutely is possible to stop feeling lonely and take control of your life and do something about it, whether that's making steps to connect with yourself or connect with other people more. It is absolutely possible to do that. And if you're not the one feeling lonely, but maybe you know someone who is, whether that's a family member or a friend or a stranger or someone you see online, I guess what I'd say to you is just have a little bit of compassion. Don't shame them for their feelings of loneliness. Don't blame them for it. Don't make them the butt of a joke, don't tell them it's their own fault or what they deserve or that this is some kind of punishment for something. Just reach out to them and show them a little bit of kindness because even like the smallest thing can go a really, really long way. Just, I guess, be kind to others and be supportive and reach out to each other, you know? Yeah, and on that note, I think I'm, I'm pretty much done for today. Thank you for watching. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on this topic down in the comments. Please feel free to share your experiences, uh, your stories, your thoughts, your arguments, anything you want. All, all the comments really help with engagement and help more people see my videos, so I appreciate a hell of a lot. Also, while we're talking about engagement, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and please subscribe if you're new here or if you've been unsubscribed from me because I'm really close to a quarter of a million subs now and I've been here for a little while and it's been a really really slow like two months growth period if that makes sense like it's trickling up and it would be really nice to hit a quarter of a million soon so if you want to help me with that I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. Also, if you'd like to see my script and notes for this video and many, many of my other videos, along with some of my photography and access to a Discord server and also get exclusive stickers and prints and fun stuff like that, you can go join my Patreon and support me over there for as little as like a dollar or a pound a month. So uh, I 
really appreciate that too if you want that is also linked down in the video description below but for now thank you for watching i really really appreciate you guys a hell of a lot uh, thanks for sticking with me through this and hopefully i'll see you again really really soon also i really hope anyone who is watching this and feels lonely is okay and that hopefully this has made you feel a little bit less alone because i know talking about it is really helping me and like working through these feelings even in a public setting like this is really really helping so i hope i hope you can get something out of it too